my mom's music has reflected every step of the way that we've lived our life. The music, as in much of the African-American genre of music, it has reflected the times that we live in and given hope that times would always get better. Can't you see the time? It's been very important because it's allowed me to continue to tell my story. We were known from the beginning as those that would inspire. And that's what gospel music has always done. It's always been this good news of the gospel. It energizes you. The original Maggie Ingram and the Ingramettes were myself, my youngest sister, and my three brothers, just the five children. Mom played the piano, we sang. This is someone who had no formal musical training. But somehow she was blessed to be able to play an old upright piano on the cotton plantation where she grew up. And she sat us down and taught us to sing. Those humble beginnings began this group. My first memories of singing, sitting in a circle in the living room and my mom beating time with a stick and teaching all five of us how to sing our parts. Being left to raise five children, a daunting task when the only skill set that she had was domestic work. When she put us to bed at night, we would hear her praying, her constant prayer, God help me keep my family together. The reply that she got from God, and this is in her own words, you'll need these five children. You love to sing, you love to teach your children to sing. <laughs> Tina, these are in pristine condition. Mm -hmm. You've done well. People give me a record, it's in a brown paper bag and <laughs> with mayonnaise on it. They done ate a bologna sandwich in the bag and just bread crumbs and stuff, but I, you know. Okay. Yeah, All right. Right. Okay. Do you realize that, that everything we've sang, it's been about our life, it and that's what's life. made it so, you know. I think that's why people can relate to it so well is because it's like, they sound like us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know? It's yeah, a, yeah. She just wanted to make music. Right. If you think about it, we're only two generations removed from someone that was born and raised on a slave plantation exactly. in Georgia. Exactly. It, it, you know, when people, oh, that was 400 years ago. Mm -hmm. Really? That was my mama and grandmother ago. Yeah. Oh, and, and well into the 60s and, and 70s, mm -hmm. segregation was much alive. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was still much alive for her to, you know, in the face of that in the face of that, to continue to travel to the little country churches and the little, yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me John couldn't well, sing Mom her. Could take some beautiful pictures. She is a beautiful yeah. woman. It, listen. It, I look uh, just like her. <laughs> Are you kidding? The Ingramettes came to Richmond as a family unit. And so whatever we did, we always worked as a family unit. We've been at this over six decades. We have a second generation. These are friends, relatives, God siblings that have come to be a part of who we are and what we do. I've been in the band since I was 14 years old. I was 12 years old. Age 19. About 20 years myself. 20 years. 20 years. It's been 19 years. All of us are brothers. We make it do what it do. As a child coming up, the Ingram Mess, it was like rock star status to actually get to see them live. And that's why it's such an honor to be a part of a legacy that had preceded all of us. I'm telling you, my hand to God, when the Ingramettes hit the building, you knew it. Mom Maggie was one of those persons that even through time, the amazing part about her was she could sing to young, and she could sing to the old, all at the same time. She could say one word. I mean, and they could make a whole song out of one word. To me, that was just incredible. She left it in the hands of Al Mita Ingram. And at this point, I thought we couldn't go any higher. Mm. 
my mom's homecoming was attended by approximately four to 5,000 people. And it was a grand celebration. People from all over came to celebrate her. They came to celebrate her legacy and what her music had meant to them. The buses here, they changed all the signs on the bus to say RIP Evangelist Maggie Ingram. Everything stopped for, for a celebration. And her dying wish, you guys keep this group going, you keep this group together. In renaming the group, I always wanted to continue to honor my mom. In one of our meetings, one of the group members said, you know what, I mean, you're legendary. You're le and, and that's how it stuck, the legendary Ingram S. When I stand before the people to sing, I'm not representing myself, but I'm representing the kingdom. And so when I'm in rehearsal, I sing just as hard as I do when I'm on the stage, and any of my group members will tell you that because I may not make it to the show Sunday. This may be my last night. He may call me home tonight, and this may be my last time singing. That's what fuels me, the fact that I am a kingdom representative, not just a, an Ingram representative or a Richmond, Virginia representative. I am a representative of the kingdom. That's what fuels me. Yes. Great God, isn't that precious? Aren't y'all precious? 